Hey, welcome. It's Brian. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, I wanted to kind of go through some of my favorite fusion records. Uh, and fusion for some is probably a pretty defined genre of guitar playing or era of playing. Uh, mine's kind of a little bit wider. And uh, I, you know, just because I wanted to talk about some of my favorite guitarists who were on the precipice or in the beginning of fusion and then as we've gone through uh, probably into the 90s and there's many many more to talk about but um, I thought it'd be fun to uh, talk about fusion or get a conversation going on what you think fusion is and to me it's kind of a combination of rock tones rock beats to some degree or the energy of rock and the sophistication of jazz and the harmony and uh, just the tunes being uh, a lot more sophisticated. Um, there's a lot of players I left out, um, not intentionally, but like a Mike Stern, uh, John Abercrombie, um, all guys I listen to a lot. So I didn't want to make it super long, but I kind of wanted to cover, you know, some of my favorite players. Um, we're going to start with one that... Um, uh, is probably not very well known, and that is Jerry Grinelli, and this was his band UFB. Uh, they did two or three records in the um, late 90s, I believe, and um, uh, they were on um, Songline, which is kind of uh, uh, Lee Townsend's record label, I believe. Uh, he produces all the uh, Bill Frizzell stuff, or he's, he did for quite a while at least. Uh, this record came out in 96. Super great uh, band. Jerry Grinelli's a, a, a unfortunately passed away, but he was kind of a Northwest uh, and Canadian um, mentor to many of the players I know. He taught at uh, Cornish School of Arts uh, in Seattle and um, just a really sweet guy that had been around for a long time, done a lot of stuff, and really... This band is him probably being maybe 30, 40 years older than the other players. He had found three uh, young players. I believe they were German, and uh, they did some really great stuff together. On this record, they do Sign of the Times, a Prince song that um, is really cool. I should do a reaction to that. There's no video of it, I'm sure, but the, the, the audio at least. Um, Washing of the Water, Peter Gabriel song, um, Lonnie's Lament, an incredible, uh, I'm trying to think, um, was that Freddie Hubbard? Uh, I'm blanking on the guy's name that wrote that song. Um, and then it has kind of a, um, kind of a themed part where he's, it's about like a Native American, um, kind of story, uh, Wounded Knee and stuff like that. I'm kind of forgetting exactly what the uh, concept was completely, but I think it's a story based on uh, Crazy Horse's dream. So um, uh, the players, uh, Kai Bruckner is the, one of the guitar players. Uh, Christian Kogel is another guitar player. And the bass player is Andres Walter. Uh, great players. I don't know where they're at now, but they did. I happened to see them three or four times, and they are really we're a cooking band really cool really fun so cool fusion record check it out jerry grinelli uh ufb specifically these uh this band i believe they have two other records so this one being the best and this one was called um look broken circle sorry broken circle <laughs> i didn't know it was even called that um this next one uh, I have to throw in just because I love Tony Williams and I love Alan Holsworth and I love, uh, this is a combination of both of the records that they did together, but it's the first one, Believe It, that is incredible, that um, everybody loves. And the second one uh, didn't really capture that same energy. Uh, the tunes were not as interesting to me. But in an incredible band and uh, Snake Oil, the whole record is so cool. If you like kind of like, it's got a, a deep groove to it, insanely cool guitar playing. My favorite Alan Holsworth tones are like on this record, the UK, uh, the Gong, 
uh, also the Soft Machine record bundles. Um, that's my favorite era, tone-wise, of, of uh, Alan's playing. But Tony Williams, another incredible drummer. I always love uh, him, Al Foster. Um, I'm trying to think of others uh, from Miles' band that were hard hitters, but really delicate players as well. Um, this one, to some, might fall out of the fusion kind of realm because this record came out in um, 96 or something like that. I'll look again. Uh, but it's John Schofield, Pat Metheny, I Can See Your House From Here. Incredible tunes. Um, John Schofield did another record with Bill Frizzell. Uh, that one's a little, that one's cool, but this one really has some great tunes. It has some Pat Metheny solos that he's doing the Roland guitar synth that are really out of this world. Really great record. Schofield's one of my favorites. So is Pat Metheny. Um, I love Pat on other people's records, uh, especially stuff like this. He really shines. Um, but yeah, John Schofield, Pat Metheny. I love this record. I can see your house from here. Uh, check it out. I'm trying to think of the song that has a killer Pat Metheny solo. Um, uh, no matter what. Anyway, in fact, there's like a lot of footage of this band. Uh, I don't think it's at um, the Montreux Jazz Fest, but it's a European Jazz Fest where they're playing all these tunes, and it's pretty cool. Uh, Lee, Lee Townsend is also, uh, Bill Frizzell's producer, is also the producer of this one. Um, 94, so, you know, 90s. Uh, the next one, um, Chad Wackerman of Frank Zappa and played a lot with Alan Holsworth uh, did several of these records. I believe there's three, and this record label uh, was great, and they did all sorts of adventurous music. It didn't really fall in any genre, um, and I'm forgetting how you say it. Yeah, I'm forgetting the label. Um, this is on Times Square Records, but it was like something else. It was, um, these were, these look like reissues. Um, I have a hard time remembering it, but like Nikki Scopolitis was on it, I believe. You know, that stuff um, was on there quite a bit. Sonny Chirac. It's not Axiom, that's Bill Laswell's label, but whatever that uh, this, this was originally on. Um, it's, so it's Chad, Allen, um, Jim Cox on uh, keyboards and piano, Jimmy Johnson on bass. So it's basically the Alan Holdsworth band. But what's cool about this is Alan is just doing solos. He The tunes are pretty simple, and uh, but good. Oh, CMP. That's the record label I think I was thinking of. It says it right here. Um, they did all sorts of great stuff. Um, yeah, so all these songs are basically written by uh, Chad Wackerman and a few with Alan Holdsworth. But basically, it's some of my favorite Holdsworth playing in this era. Um, because he's just basically wailing, you know, he's not, it's not a million chord changes that you can't comprehend, and it's just really discernible, um, and great. I believe there's two for sure that Alan's on, uh, this one was my favorite, um, and, uh, yeah, I had to rebuy it probably for the third time after I sold it or whatever, so, anyway, great record, uh, Chad Weckerman, 40 Reasons, check it out. Uh, this one, Borelli Lagrené, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Um, he was a huge Django um, a prodigy, basically. He was doing records at 14 and uh, definitely admiring, admi kid, um, admired his playing because he could do the Django thing like nobody else. And he was so young. And then, to shake it up, he went and did this record, Inferno. And it's a full-on fusion record. Um, one of my favorite capturing a live performance type records I've heard. It's really a live sounding record. Um, all sorts of session players on it. And obviously it had, <laughs> it says recommended for rock radio. 
because there's a song called Inferno, Rocket, and Certitude is a ballad, uh, like a jazz ballad. Um, but I think on each song is like a different kind of like rhythm section, like well-known players. Check it out. Um, it rocks. It's this cool playing, you know, he's really kind of going for it. And it was really a huge uh, controversial thing for him because he went to do this record and he did another record after it, which I believe Dennis Chambers was the drummer on all of that one. Uh, but this one shines, man. The tunes are just killer. Um, but, you know, people were upset that he wasn't doing a more traditional jazz thing, which after those la these two fusion rock-ish records, he went back to doing that on electric guitar, uh, uh, more of a jazz style, you know, tone and all of that. But there's a special place in my heart for this. I remember when it came out, I went out and bought it after hearing uh, Inferno and then Rocket. You know, su super cool. Great record. Borelli La Grenade. And um, yeah, one of my favorites. Uh, John Schofield, he's got a million records that I love. This one's really special. Um, I mean, the the... It's a band. It sounds like a band because there's Joe Lovano, Charlie Hayden, Jack D. Jeanette, um, and the tunes on this are incredible. I think this won a Grammy. Not that it makes any real difference, but um, it's a really great record. And I, uh, John Schofield's records like um, Shinola, that's a with Adam Nussbaum and um, Steve Swallow. If you love cool, aggressive electric guitar or bass playing excuse me and kind of just a raw recording those first records um like shinola and i believe there's another one like nightlife or something like that uh great records but i love this one sophisticated compositions great guitar playing great interplay the whole deal cool record check it out if you love schofield you know it if you don't uh know schofield this is kind of a, a decent place to start for sure so um, I'm picking a kind of a funny El Miola one, but this is Rendezvous, uh, Electric Rendezvous, scoo excuse me. Uh, this is the band, um, that did some of his most popular records. Uh, I, I picked this one, I don't know why exactly, but I thought it'd be different because I've talked about Land of the Midnight Sun and Elegant Gypsy, um, before, but this was kind of the end of the era for, uh, the band with Jan Hammer. Um, they went to do stuff later, I believe, um, but I believe they did that live record, Tour de Force, right before that, which is probably one of the coolest, uh, highly energetic records of all time. Um, unfortunately, it suffers from having two or three Jan Hammer songs on it um, that I wish there was more um, L.D. Mule or just other tunes, um, but that record smokes, so... I don't have that one, so I picked this one. Uh, lots of cool stuff on it. Check it out. Um, kind of dated. Lots of flanging on the bass. Uh, Anthony Jackson's the bass player. Probably one of the most incredible bass player of all time. And um, lots of flange on it, which at the time was kind of cool. I still love it, but it seemed a little heavy-handed on the flanging on it. But definitely cool. Great compositions. Killer. Yeah, just an amazing man. Check it out. Al Miola. Um, I don't know if I would start here per se, but it, it's, you, you kind of get the gist of his best playing there. Uh, how could you not have Blow by Blow? I bought this when I was a kid, one of my first fusion records, in fact, and an incredible band. Uh, there's no one that can beat Jeff Beck as far as being, uh, such a, an emotionally nuanced player that can understand melody. Um, so yeah. Uh, super great record, great place to start, and um, yeah, if you love Jeff Beck, you know this record, but anyway, had to put it on here. The next one's a no-brainer, uh, Intermounting Flame by the Mahavishnu Orchestra featuring John McLaughlin. Uh, John's a huge, you know, in my life, uh, I'll talk about him a little more in the next uh, the record coming up, but nothing had this rawness, this energy, this frenetic pace, but so complicated and beautiful all at the same time. 
and they went on to do kind of this this band did two records uh this and birds of fire they had a third one but the band kind of fell apart john regrouped and had a different drummer uh, Nerana michael walden was the drummer on um apocalypse and um uh visions of the emerald beyond and i believe ralph armstrong another amazing bass player was uh on those records as well and uh so they went on and uh did a couple records like that and then the last one was inner worlds i haven't listened to that for a while i'm not sure who's on it but this is where you gotta start so anyway inner mountain flame uh i lived in seattle for a long time when bill frizzell moved there it was the early 90s uh roughly and he i saw him many 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 times and the first time seeing this band uh kermit driscoll is the bass player joey baron an incredible drummer every time i've seen him one of my favorite drummers and then um hank roberts was the cello player and this record's so subtle and beautiful and um seeing them play this record was an amazing experience um if you were talking this loud you were talking almost louder than the band in some sections so bill frizzell's a huge guy i have to say i haven't listened to a lot of his stuff recently but this record um you know where in the world uh really was kind of my cornerstone album for him uh he's got many records i love but this is kind of where it kind of the one i go back to I guess the most so anyway bill frizzell where in the world this next one's what you know i was talking about with mclaughlin uh miles davis live evil um all the records around it meaning um jack johnson in a silent way um uh you know um i'm blanking on the this is the live version of the record i wanted to say um but all of that stuff in the through basically uh there's so much with john mclaughlin on it that it's incredible um how many recordings there are from just this band that were around it i'm i, I literally think there's probably five or six records besides this uh the live evil record and bitches brew was the actual you know uh studio recording they did this and there's like i don't know tons of stuff so to me one of the most important records in fusion and the kind of amalgamation of rock and jazz uh sensibilities is right here so huge mclaughlin plan there was a great interview in a uh, guitar player where they broke down all the guitars that john mclaughlin played from uh extrapolation which was a solo uh kind of pre-fusion record that john did all the way through the miles stuff and he was playing like a, a fender mustang or something like that something really weird that was kind of cool to hear about so anyway uh the last one pat metheny bright size life really important record um uh just like just the way pat approached the guitar was really unique the compositions are really beautiful very ventilated there's solos in it but it's not gratuitous and jocko uh really shines on it. it he's not he doesn't take a lot of solos per se it's just a really unique record the feel of it's really cool and bob moses was the drummer and uh pat metheny that's probably my favorite pat metheny record of him uh but he's going on like i said to do lots of great records uh um joshua redmond did a record one of his first ones that pat metheny's on and maybe it's a live one i'm not sure it's their actual studio recording of it but man great playing on that um lots of other ones song x is another favorite of mine um rejoicing is a, another pat metheny trio record that's great uh also question and answer i like rejoicing more it's a darker sounding record um but question and answers got some great stuff i believe that's dave holland and roy haynes on question and answer um so i love the pat metheny in a trio setting where he's just kind of playing guitar and there's not like 
three trumpet players and a couple of singers backing him up or whatever. So uh, that's my opinion. Those are my fusion picks. Uh, please come back and check out the next uh, video in the series when that comes out. I'm Brian. Thanks for watching. Bye.